It is 93 million years ago, a time when a vast inland sea covers much of North America. On the land, dinosaurs thrive, but in the seaways, a whole host of marine reptiles rule the waves. These animals would not be able to get so large without ample smaller animals to sustain themselves, and the shallow waters teem with everything from plankton to fish to seabirds. In the deeper parts of the sea, huge schools of fish swim along the ocean currents, making their way to their breeding grounds. A sight so large, they appear as great silver masses from above. This much food on the move will no doubt attract predators, but for now the shoal is moving peacefully. The fish move as one, looking like a vast living organism, and of course, there is safety in numbers. But the center of the school begins to shift and then part, but not in the rapid bursts that usually signal an attack. The fish steadily part, and as they do, they reveal one of the Western Interior Seaway's most powerful predators, Megacephalosaurus. One of the largest pliosaurs the world has ever seen, his jaws that measure nearly two meters glide through the evading fish. His nine meter body follows, weighing 11 tons but moving effortlessly underwater, propelled by his four massive flippers that give the predator more speed and maneuverability than what many would believe something of his size would be capable of. Ejecting bubbles from his nostrils, the Megacephalosaurus turns and slowly swims beneath the shimmering mass of fish. He is not here to feed on them, though he certainly could if he was hungry enough. Today, he is wanting to hunt one of the many species that have come to feed on the plentiful fish. Because Megacephalosaurus will hunt other large marine reptiles, as their ancestors have done since the Jurassic. Above him, the sound of splashing draws his attention. A flock of pteranodons are flying over the sea and diving into the water to snare any fish in their toothless beaks. They have to tuck their wings in tight to become more streamlined, and some torpedo deep into the water. Whether they catch a fish or not, they have to use their wings to swim back to the surface and then get back into the air. The bombardment of pterosaurs continues, so the fish dive deeper to get out of reach. In response, the flock begins to break off, to wait for their prey to rise again. The last of the flyers get to the surface and flap their wings to get airborne. One is just getting free of the waves when in a flash he disappears back into the water, without a sound and barely a splash. Beneath the water, the Megacephalosaurus has claimed his first meal. The lightweight pteranodon is helpless as the giant pulls her down by her feet and then opens his jaws and snaps down on her body, killing her with his immense bite force. The predator swallows the pterosaur down quickly and returns to swimming alongside the mass of fish. That was barely a snack, and a bony one at that. He needed something much larger to satiate his hunger, but eventually, something would come along. His hearing has evolved to detect vibrations in the water made by other animals, and his sense of smell can pick up the faintest remains of anything in the water. Often, he will know every species around him without ever getting close to them. First, he senses a large turtle, Archelon. That may be a decent meal, but they have a tough shell and are armed with a sharp beak. Next, he detects one of the many species of shark that inhabit the oceans, Critoxyrhina. Also an option, but they are fast and have better senses than even he has. After that, he picks up the trail of a group of plesiosaurs, the 10 meter long Elasmosaurus, and there are at least 11 of them. They would be a good catch, and so the Megacephalosaurus puts a bit more effort into his strokes, and zeroes in on his targets. As the large male moves closer to his potential meal, the sounds and smells of a chaotic hunt become more prevalent, and it doesn't take long for the carnage to come into view. The front of the huge migrating school of fish are under attack from multiple different species. From above, the Pteranodons have restarted their airborne attacks. From below, a school of Xyphactinus charge in, scoffing down as much as they can fit into their wide mouths. Darting in and out of the school is a crocodilian, Terminonares, its long jaws snapping up the slippery fish with blinding precision. And there, in amongst the feeding frenzy, were the family of elasmosaurs. 
their long necks twisting to snag any fish not fast enough to escape the needle-like teeth that lined their jaws. The Megacephalosaurus swum below the mass of fish to use them as cover, but through them he could see the large plesiosaurs are also in trouble. The group were being harassed by a mosasaur, though a smaller species, about 6 meters long. However, it wasn't going after the 10 meter adults. The elasmosaurs are trying to protect the two youngest members of the group that are small enough to be targeted by the mosasaur. Every time the large lizard gets too close, one of the adults is there to block him with their bodies or snap at him with their jaws. Seeing this, the Megacephalosaurus swims down and under the writhing mass of fish and moves towards the group quickly but unseen. The Mosasaur strikes and retreats. The Plesiosaurs twist and snap. The Pliosaur moves in for the kill. The huge predator gets almost directly under his target. He peeks out from under the fish for one final check and then using all four flippers, swims straight up. Exploding through the school of fish, neither of the two species of reptiles see him coming. He goes through the middle of the elasmosaur group and opens his immense jaws. The predator spears one of the juveniles from below, catching it dead center, his long conical teeth stabbing into its body. His form rushes through the gap, the momentum buffeting the elasmosaurs too close to him and leaving a trail of bubbles and blood. The juvenile is killed almost instantly and goes limp in his jaws. The rest of the plesiosaurs swim away from the giant, some shielding the remaining youngsters as they retreat from danger. The Megacephalosaurus begins to consume his catch. As some pieces are torn free and swallowed, others begin to sink into the depths. But the Mosasaur is still hungry and moves toward the giant building up speed to catch some of the discarded bits of flesh and dart away before the Pliosaur even notices him. The Megacephalosaurus floats relatively still in the water, concentrating on ripping and swallowing his meal. The Mosasaur swivels under him and goes for a piece of flipper, but without warning, the jaws of the Megacephalosaurus snap around and catch the Mosasaur's head in the end of his jaws. The long teeth puncture right through the reptile's skull, right into the brain. Its head stops and its body curls forward from its momentum until both carnivores go still in the water. Holding on to his newest catch, the Pliosaur ascends to the surface for a breath of air. Resting for a while, the male slowly begins to tear apart the large lizard. They got too impatient. But he can't eat it all, and the scent of blood is attracting both sharks and the Xyphactinus. As long as they keep their distance, all will get plenty to eat. Greetings fellow travelers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down one of the last pliosaurs to swim the oceans, Megacephalosaurus. Megacephalosaurus's first remains were discovered in Kansas in 1950 and was originally identified as another species of pliosaur, Brachalcanius. It wasn't until a study published in 2013 revealed that the remains had enough distinctive traits for it to be identified as its own genus, being named Megacephalosaurus, which means great-headed lizard. The holotype includes a mostly complete skull, three cervical ribs, and a cervical neural arch. After receiving its own name, another fossil was reassigned to Megacephalosaurus, this became the paratype and includes parts of the upper jaw and some cranial bones. Megacephalosaurus belongs to the Pliosaur family. In the Phalasmophonia clade, it lived in the Turonian age of the late Cretaceous between 94 and 92 million years ago. Though they only have the skull and a few other bones, scientists have been able to estimate its body length, as most Pliosaur's skulls are about one-fifth to one-fourth the total body length. The most complete skull is 175 centimeters long, so it could have reached sizes between 6 to 9 meters in length, making it the largest pliosaur from North America. Two thirds of the skull is the snout. In fact, one could argue the majority of pliosaur skulls are just the jaws themselves. The teeth and the top jaws remain relatively the same size along the length of the jaw. Those of the bottom jaw do change size, with those at the front being the largest, 
and then reduce it in size the further back along the jaw. Most pliosaurs have five pairs of premaxillary teeth, however Megacephalosaurus only has four, with there being two pits in the space where those teeth usually would be. This loss of the fifth set of teeth seems to have occurred in later species as some other Cretaceous pliosaurs like Kronosaurus also lack these extra teeth. The teeth themselves are conical with a pointed tip, measuring up to 4.5 centimeters in crown height. All of the teeth curve slightly towards the tongue away from the midline of the jaw. The enamel of the teeth have long, thin, and convex ridges, known as apicobasal ridges, that run in the direction from the crown base to the tip. This is an adaptation that would have increased the teeth's ability not only to puncture, but also to grip onto its prey. With these teeth and jaws, it's been suggested that Megacephalosaurus would go after smaller prey, but small for a 9 meter multi-ton predator, and it's likely it could have eaten just about anything it wanted. The ribs that were found have an interesting feature, in that they are double-headed, meaning that the head of the rib is structured for attachment at two points of the vertebra. This is seen in some Jurassic pliosaurs, but is completely absent in Cretaceous pliosaurs, so Megacephalosaurus may have retained this feature from its ancestors, or evolved this trait independently at some point after all others with double-headed ribs died out. Megacephalosaurus lived in what is called the Western Interior Seaway, a vast inland sea that split North America in two at the time. It was a top predator in those waters, but this was also a time when the pliosaurs were dying out. So what happened to them? Well, around 94 to 93 million years ago, the world was going through what is termed the Cenomanian Turonian Boundary Event, which in short was caused by large amounts of underwater volcanic activity. This caused global temperatures to rise, acidification of the oceans, and up to 25% of marine fauna to go extinct. Despite this, many of those species in the Western Interior Seaway were able to survive this, as their fossils have been found both before and after the event. The pliosaurs, however, didn't fare so well. The number of species was already lower than their glory days from the late Jurassic, but after the Cenomanian Turonian event, only three species remained, and as the Turonian continued, these three disappeared as well. Now, of course, we don't have fossil records for the whole world at this time, but scientists do source this time period as the extinction of the Pliosaur family, a group that started in the early Jurassic and almost made it to the very end of the Cretaceous. It's not entirely known why the Pliosaurs and not other successful marine reptiles went extinct, but it may have been that after the event, their prey didn't recover quickly enough to support their surviving population. Just because you make it through a tough event doesn't mean you are off scot-free after all. Their decline and eventual disappearance coincided with the rise of mosasaurs that took their place as top predators, and may have even competed with them while they were on their last legs. Megacephalosaurus was nonetheless a testament to the group's success, as though we don't have a lot of its skeleton, it shows that at least the Pliosaur's skull plan was effective for a huge portion of the Mesozoic era. No doubt it was another terrifying predator that roamed the deadly waters of the Western Interior Seaway. But what do you think of Megacephalosaurus? And for my question of the week, what other theories have you heard or thought of in regards to why Megacephalosaurus and other pliosaurs didn't make it while other marine reptiles did? Let me know what lesser known extinct creature you'd like me to do a breakdown on next, and until then please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.